Okay, so now we're back with more buzzer. It's been kind of a while, I don't know why, but with God Eater 2 and Bazaar, I kind of get to play this so in so much possible, and I have to wait a long time. But let's not brag about and continue with the story. Last time we saved a kid. Come, come on. Sir, we just received a Sylph J from the boss of the Blood Wings. She has a job for us and wants us to meet her in Logress. How should we respond? Let's do it. Besides, we need to see if that demon in the villa was actually a Therian. Good point. And the Bloodwings might know something about the other Therians, too. We're heading for Logris. Prepare to set sail. Ready anytime! I think I have to go here. I lost my mother to a demon. Yet that girl's a Therian. I... I don't even know what I want anymore. That's pretty. You like to look at that thing, don't you? Yes. My mother... Someone very important to me gave me this. I treasure it a lot. Looking at it gives me strength. Do you want to see it? Yeah! Ah! What's wrong? My face! It's... it's scary! I don't want to look like that. I don't want my mommy to hate me. Mommy! Look what you did. Mommy! When I was her age, that's just how I cried. Come, Alana. I want you to see this. What? That huge owie. What happened? Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, it's wait. big and ugly, isn't it? There are scary things about my body, too. But do you think I'm scary, Kamalana? No, not at all. But are you all right? Does that hurt? Thanks, sweetie. I'm all right, I promise. What about me? Do you think I'm scary? You're such a sweetheart, Kamalana. Nobody could ever be scared of you. Not me, not your mother, not Lafisette. You don't have to cry anymore. It'll be okay. I promise. Okay. That scar, was it from a demon? Yeah. They attacked my village when I was a girl. I was so hurt, I couldn't move. But my mother lured them away from me so I could survive. What happened to her? <sighs> the last thing she said to me was, stay strong and keep living. Oh. Come to the deck. Grimoire says she's learned something from the book. Hey. Why is your face so red? It's nothing. Somehow, I doubt that. It's nothing, I, I swear. Oh boy, when she's gonna discover that she's gonna be so angry. I legit did not expect that. Do you all remember the second verse of that song Lafayette read earlier? Four Empyreans may tear him asunder. But so long as there is one receptive to divine power, Therian shall be forever reborn in sight of the full crimson moon. Right. That's what I've gathered you all here to discuss. 
And we think that passage means that Inomi Notch and the Therians will be revived by a chosen one, right? Yes, but the shall be forever reborn part kept bothering me. I've reconsidered my analysis. Suppose that instead of someone being chosen by Inomi Not to create Therians, the song means that Inomi Not chooses who becomes Therians. <laughs> But so long as there is one receptive to divine power, Therians shall be forever reborn. What do you think that could mean? That someone receptive to Inominat's power will be reborn as a Therian. Like Kamoana. Which is to say that the Abbey figured out how to turn people into Therians, and then got right to work. That's... Are you really that surprised? Artorius has always been one to prioritize the many over the individual, as I well know. Another thing to consider is this wording about Therians being forever reborn. This could mean that one Therian will be reborn again and again, or it could mean that different Therians will be born to take their place. Meaning that even if you kill one, there are more waiting in line. They can't be wiped out. Looks like prioritizing the one over the many was the right call this time, eh, Velvet? I never said I wouldn't kill her, if it would prevent Inominat's reawakening. But Therians can't be killed. Not truly. Hmm. So, in a nutshell, if you kill one, another person who's receptive to Inominat's power will be reborn as one. Right. But the song says that seven mouths feed the body. So there's only so many around. If you don't kill them, the next ones won't be born. Exactly. So we remove the seven Therians from their Earth Pulse points instead. But then, we also have to protect them so the Abbey doesn't steal them back, or kill them. Sounds tricky. We gotta protect my bug, too. Yeah, you take real good care of that thing now, got it? You bet I will! In that case, we should probably work on securing a proper hideout for ourselves. You got a secret base or anything, Aizen? It's every man's fantasy, but sadly, I don't. <laughs> we need a hard-to-find spot. One where we can guarantee a steady supply of malevolence for the Therians. Hmm, somewhere devoid of people, but full of malevolence. Real poser you got there. With the Abbey in control of the entire continent, finding a place like that will be easier said than done. Meanwhile, Inominat's reawakening draws ever closer. We'll have to keep collecting our Therians while we search for a hideout. For now, let's just get to Logris. Moron, I was drifting out at sea for three days, almost died out there. We here, poor you. You probably deserved it. Say that again, wise ass. I dare you. Ah, uh, shut up, both of you. No one's getting anything until you pay me what you owe first. Uh, are they gonna be okay? Don't pay them any mind. Sailors are just a short tempered bunch, that's all. Huh? The hell are you doing? What's going on? They've jacked up the price to dock our ship here. Oh, yeah? Some real balls you've got there, buddy. If you lot want to moor here, that's the price you're gonna pay. Look, pirates are a liability to begin with, but calling your crew infamous these days would be putting it lightly. The more wanted you are, the more it's gonna cost to hide you. Capiche? <sighs> Hard to argue there. Benwick, just pay the man what he wants. Uh, yes, sir. You're such pushovers. You and the captain both. I knew I could count on you to come through, Eisen. Pleasure doing business with you. Looks like I'm causing you trouble. It comes with the job. Don't sweat it. Some sailors just have longer tempers than others. <laughs> Noted. Huh? 
I got something. Well, I guess we have to go somewhere. All right, everything's all fixed up. Now to polish this ship from top to bottom. You really throw your back into your work, don't you? Why shouldn't I? The Von Eltias are pride and joy, our weapon. And most importantly, our home. I'm sure you've heard this before, but she's one odd-looking ship. The Von Eltia was built by the Kingdom 12 years ago, using the very best technology available. She was designed for search and seizure operations on the high seas. Apparently, her unusual design comes from an engineer who is familiar with technology from the far continent. But on her maiden voyage, a string of mysterious accidents took the lives of the captain, then the second, and then the third in command. People thought the ship was bad luck. She was about to be scrapped when Captain Eifried came and snatched her for himself. If the ship was bad luck, why did Eifried want it? Well, I'm sure part of it was that he wanted a sturdy ship capable of reaching the far continent. But when I asked him why, he said, she looks interesting. She's too interesting if you ask me. We've been chased by storms, struck by icebergs, attacked by a giant whale. You name it. Three years ago when the first mate arrived, it all made sense. To think we'd been haunted by a reaper the whole time. Oh, come on. Don't go blaming the captain and the first mate for every bad thing that happens. I bet you're all just frustrated because you're forced to go where they tell you. None of us are forced to be here. We're here because we choose to be here. And we do so fully knowing what sort of men the captain and the first mate are. Anyone can leave the crew whenever they like. We're free pirates, each of us, here because we want to be. Some of us love adventure, some are looking to test their fate, and some are just searching for a good place to die. We're a ragtag bunch of rogues, that's for sure. But not a one of us has died carrying regret or resentment. So we're glad to help out you and yours. But you'd best not forget what we stand for. I won't. They're quite the crew, aren't they? Were all those accidents truly caused by your power? Yeah. I've been searching far and wide for a way to lift the Reaper's curse. But when I couldn't find a single thread to follow on this continent, I turned my eyes to the other side of the ocean. And that's why you boarded this ship. And a fine ship she is. The Von Eltia was built from 1,000-year-old wood, you know. Before I found my coin, she was my vessel. But then the accidents came. And then Eifried stole the ship. Did he know you were on board? Definitely. He had pretty solid resonance going for him. Although at first, I think he assumed I was just a dour-eyed lubber worthy of little notice. I suppose being a Reaper tends to take its toll like that. <laughs> no argument there. But still, whether they could see me or not, they didn't act any differently at all. I fought my damn curse with everything I had. And Eifried and his crew fought right along with me. Hell, we even finally made it to the Far Continent. And you didn't find anything there? To help with your curse? I didn't even look. But that's why you went there, isn't it? Eventually, I just got tired of fighting back. The crew? They taught me how to feel alive. And the joy of pursuing my dreams alongside good friends. Well, that was nice. And you can actually see where it opened up a little. I'm not sure how far I am. Just when are we going to be allowed free access through Vortigern? Having to go all the way around it every time is far too inconvenient. If they insist on building a big gate over the sea, the least they can do is let honest folk through it. I get why you're upset, but maybe they just haven't been able to devote the resources to fix it after those savage demons wrecked the place. Look, those demons who attacked Helebees are still on the loose, aren't they? Yep, standing right here. From what I heard, the demons who wrecked Vortigern were the same ones that killed the High Priest. What? No way. Wait a minute. The High Priest was killed? Yeah. The official story is that he's injured or sick or something. But I heard differently. 
Then no wonder they haven't had time for Vortigern. I hope the Abbey finds those demons quick. Those monsters need to pay for what they did. Hmm, looks like our infamy is growing by the day. Maybe they've even put a bounty on us by now. They keep embellishing our escapades, though. I'm honestly a little hurt they're calling us monsters. The more they embellish, the easier it is for us to get around. Confusion and panic will only help us. The Bloodwing Butterflies operate in the Empire's shadows. Not even the Abbey knows their full scope beyond whispers and rumor. And you all have a connection to them, don't you? Dark and interconnected is the Underworld. We've heard voices in the shadows, glimpsed faces behind paper-thin masks. The attack on High Priest Gideon. Was that at their behest? Yeah, the Bloodwings asked us to take him out. We did it in exchange for information that could lead us to Artorius. Information? You would assassinate a man for mere information? Yes. Information on the Shepherd who rules the world. Not a bad deal, if you ask me. We just work with them when our interests align. Nothing more. That's the kind of thin justification I'd expect to hear from them, too. But the Bloodwings were acting upon knowledge that the High Priest was harming the people of the city. You're right. The... Incident with the Nectar was the Church's failing. And it seems that the Bloodwing Butterfly Network goes further and deeper than we had thought. They knew about the barrier at the throne, too. And Velvet's expertise at Dove Mimicry. <sighs> Would you stop bringing that up? Dove Mimicry? What does that mean? I have no idea. There was a Dove near the Dock Checkpoint. That's all. <laughs> huh? Right! It was a black, full-chested dove, wasn't it? Cuckoo! A black, full-chested dove? Is that some sort of underworld code word? Here we are, back in Logris. It was a lot tougher to get in the first time. <laughs> More funny than tough, if you ask me. Oh, you mean Velvet's little dove act? Cuckoo! I'd be careful teasing her if I were you. You know how she can get. Oh, don't act like you didn't enjoy it, too. I'm sure you did, right? Good little boys don't lie to adults, you know. I might have. Just a little... Say it like a dove. It was funny. Coo, coo. Is Inominot's book so difficult? Grimoire seemed perplexed by it. Yeah. She said it was written in ancient Avarost, a language that uses Impressionist script. I've never heard of Impressionist script. Each character can have many different meanings and readings, depending on the emotion it's expressing and the way it relates to the characters around it. Some modest records on its grammar and structure survive, but none that say how to read the emotion the characters express. Grimoire said that you have to recreate the writer's feelings as a sort of starting point in order to read it. I see. And you have a talent for that sort of thing? I guess I do. But a script based on emotions? That's as far removed from modern language as can be. Yeah. It's completely unrelated, apparently. How can it be completely unrelated? After the temperance of Avarost, the entirety of human civilization vanished. The language went with it. Much as a blooming flower loses its petals, the Avaros civilization grew too far and came to its final end. The surviving buildings and ancient tools, the likes of which our technology cannot replicate, were the beginning of that end. In any case, it sounds like deciphering that writing will take quite a while. <laughs> On to battle! <laughs>
Don't become like me. <laughs> Don't try and imitate Ice. Grow, please. please. Again, why there's another option for this to remove all this? Like, I really want to see this. Let's see. Man, the capital sure is big. Yeah, with historical buildings and artisans and all, there's much of interest here for a boy who loves to learn. Uh huh. Sightseeing's nice and all, but don't wander off and get lost. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Don't worry about him. He can take care of himself. I know. I was just saying. What a bargain! You look like travelers. I have some good news for you. The restrictions on travel to the Aldina Plains are going to be lifted soon. The road's opening back up! So, that's the latest word on the streets? <laughs> I see what you did there. I try to liven things up around here. <laughs> well, ever since Lord Artorius became the shepherd, demon attacks have gone down. The world's filled with hardships, but perhaps things are starting to go in the right direction. Perhaps. The demons who nearly destroyed Helavis are still skipping about on the loose, though. What? And just the other day, a village near Isalt was destroyed by the demon blight. Guess the capital doesn't mind, though. What? Don't worry about it. Your shepherd and the abbey are going to save the world, right? Um, listening to you has kind of gotten me all nervous again. If you hear any other scary stories, let me know, please. Hmm. I've got one with fresh blood, melted bodies. Oh, oh, maybe that tale about the demon doll that comes alive. If you're going to waste time, we're leaving you here. Well, that's enough of this detour, then. Sorry to be such a drag. Wait! That doll one sounded really cool! Yeah. yeah. What's with this crowd? Majalu's troop just put on a real show. Man, it was the best. Her dancing was every bit as great as I'd heard. Wow, the Majalu? Surely you mean Mogilu. Has my time to bask in fame finally come at long last? No, we're talking about Majalu, not Mogilu. You know, Lulu, the famous dancer? She actually goes by the majestic Lulu, but everyone calls her Majalu. Just watching the beauty of her dance, you can't help but feel like maybe everything's going to turn out okay in the world. Sounds like a pretty cheerful act she has. Cheerful? This is all a rip-off! She's just trying to pass off as Magilu's menagerie and profit from our good name! What good name? We don't actually perform anything. getting started eventually but now this con artist comes along and ruins everything i can't just ignore that you know huh? oh hello <gasps> it's modulo you did great today modulo i loved it thank you so much but according to my teacher i still have a long way to go i'll work hard to do better next time so i hope you'll come see me Modulo's teacher is a dancer named Balta, whose immense talent brought him all the fame in the world. But Balta suffered a tragic injury that took him forever from the stage, and now Modulo was working hard to carry on his dream. <laughs> so, you're Modulo then? I am. My teacher and I work really hard to put on performances that'll leave a lasting impact. And I refuse to let anyone call me a phony. Oh? to stop me taking it to the stage and seeing which one of us can better hold a crowd yes that's just what i was hoping for Lulu, don't go around picking petty fights but sir this woman she you should know better if you have the energy to spare spitting vitriol at people you should refocus that anger into moving your body if you need to express yourself do it on the stage Yes, sir. You're right. <sighs> Teacher, is the pain acting up again? 
It's no matter. What does pain compare to losing the ability to dance? Anyway, what matters is how you're holding up. I I'm fine, sir. Good. Then let's head back and practice some more. Why do I have a bad feeling about this? He seems strict. He does. But keep in mind that Balta recognized her talent at a young age. He even adopted her so he could pass on everything he knew. He might be strict, but only because he believes in her. You sure know an awful lot about them. I'm sort of a fan of theirs, you could say. A teacher and his student, chasing after the same dream. What a sweet little story they have. That's why I think it's high time for Moggy Lou's Menagerie to put on a show. And for our act, we'll be a comedy duo. Comedy? Where'd you get that idea? You heard me propose a challenge to little Majalu, right? But not one of you knows a single acrobatic trick. Sorry. Don't apologize. You couldn't have seen this coming. Well, you could act like you feel a little bad at least. Now, normally I'd make you guys do something flashy like jump through a ring of fire, but I'll be magnanimous and let you do comedy instead. With comedy, I can take control of the stage and keep things lively. I can feed you the audience on a platter. But... but going on the same stage as Majulu... it's too much to handle. Oh, I can't wait to take her down a peg or two. I'm out. I don't even know why you're bothering. It's hopeless. It's not hopeless! Plus, if we do well, we'll be raking in the dough. What better opportunity do we have to get started than now? After all, people will come thinking we're Majalu's troop. You're sure eager to profit off of her good name. That's exactly the material I want. Keep throwing out such zingers and the audience will be in stitches. I'm not sure I follow, but okay. The only thing getting thrown out is gonna be you. You know, I think you could pull off being the straight man in our act. What? Keep your compliments to yourself. This plan might sound dumb, but more money never hurts. Aizen, not you too. Then it's settled. Now we just need to book ourselves a few gigs. I've got an in with all the stage directors in town. For now, I think everyone should pair up so we can figure out just what sort of comedy chops you all have. Everybody? Even me? Certainly. Each one of you is a part of Moggy Lou's menagerie, after all. I... I'm not so sure about this. Why did I stick you? <laughs> Whenever I hear Magilu's name, I can't help but think of Magilanica. Magilanica? Who's that? Oh, she's just a girl who worked as part of the freak show. Talked to spirits nobody else could see. That's her, all right. She had many mysterious powers, like moving things without touching them and divining where people would find lost objects. For a time, people called her the Little Witch. She was pretty popular. Thanks to her, the rest of the troop took in plenty of cash. Or so I hear. Yeah, but eventually they took it too far and the kingdom tried them for heresy. I hear Magilanica was subjected to really brutal torture. True fact. Everyone knows this story. Well, I've never heard it. That's not too surprising. It all took place when I was a young woman myself. Remind me, Magilu. How old are you again? What? How old would you say I am? Well, from your reaction, I can at least tell you're not my age. Yeah. Don't ask a woman for it. Ah, oh, you're here too. 